Hello folks, this is Mike. In today's project, we're going to work on these really loose joints on these chairs. So loose, in fact, that I no longer have dining room chairs, I have rocking chairs. Now, we are going to fix these dowel pin joints here, but the main focus will be the mortise and tenon joints, which are really sloppy on the side rails. Now, to fix those joints, we would normally use a saw, a little wedge, and lots of elbow grease. And we're going to do that today, but I'm also going to show you a quick and easy hack using pantyhose. <laughs> so stay with me and I'll show you how we do it. Now you'll notice I've laid some old mismatched towels on the tabletop to protect what's left of the finish on these old chairs. Now before we go on, an FYI here. This idea about using the pantyhose is not my original idea, okay? I learned about this, or actually I read about it many years ago when I was a young man, and I've used it many times since with great success. Now these are the tools that we may or may not use during our project, and I'll show you how to use these as we go along. Uh, so there are a couple here that you may question, especially this one. Now this is a chisel of some kind. <laughs> I bought this so long ago, I can't remember what it was for, but it's great for working inside those tenon holes. So if you know, please comment and let me know. Anyway, so now let's move on with our project. Now we're going to be repairing two chairs here with similar problems. Uh, unfortunately, I've got other joints loose besides just the mortise and tenons here on the rail. So I need to disassemble this chair to inspect those. So I'm going to remove the seats and set them aside, and then I'm going to remove this hardware here uh, so I can inspect the legs and, get, and separate the chair. Now I'm sure that some of you have already noticed that I've got a three-legged chair. <laughs> and I do have the piece. I will be repairing this in a future video. We don't have time now. But if you're interested in that, be sure to go below and like our video, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell. And that way you won't miss it when it comes up. Now the situation with this chair is this back structure is still good and tight. This is good and tight, and then you can tell, easily tell that once you have the screws and the bolts out. So I'm not going to bother repairing these in this juncture, but you can see this, this right here has problems. The angle block is glued in place, so it will have to be worked loose. Now I'm using a flat bladed chisel to work apart the joint. And we're working from the back side so that any accidental marks here won't be noticed. And take your time with this and gently separate the joint. We want to take it apart little by little. I don't want to risk any danger of either damage in the dowel pins or the side rails. And now the angle block has loosened, so it should be clear sailing now. The joint should completely separate now with our chisels without a great deal of pressure. And there we go, we're loose. And you'll notice that our side rail was loose also. Now we have six dowel pins to deal with, and I'm going to remove the loose dowels. There are two that are still firmly fixed, and they are in this fragile laminated front piece. Because I don't want to take a chance on damaging that piece. So now we'll clean off the excess glue buildup with a chisel and follow up with sandpaper. Be sure to remove it from the dowel ends also to ensure that when we put them back in the holes, uh, that they will fully insert. I'm going to use a drill bit the same size as the holes and I'm going to run it in to remove any excess off the walls and the hole bottom. Uh, be careful we don't want to make the hole any wider than it already is. Now we'll clean up the remaining dowel pins with a little sandpaper. I cut a new set of dowels to replace the ones that we took out making sure that they were the exact same length as the old ones. Now we can move on to our side rail. On the end of the side rail, I have an accumulation of gunk that needs to be removed. Now this seems to be a combination of old glue and probably the finish. I'm going to take a sharp chisel and then just slice it off gently 
Now you want to be careful here not to slice into the wood. We don't want to reduce the size of this tenon any more than we have to. That done, I'll take some fine sandpaper and hand sand until I have a nice smooth tenon line. Now once this is done, we can move on to the sockets. And to deal with the gunk on the bottom of the rail ends, I simply went to my big sander and just zapped it off. So now let's look at our socket and you'll see that we have this accumulated uh, deposits in the bottom here too. You can also see there's been a previous repair but it didn't work too well because so I've got dried glue here. This wouldn't have come from the manufacturer this way. Now there's two ways to do this. I could try to get my chisel down in there and clean that out or my mystery chisel or I'm going to just take my drill with a bit the same size as the socket and I'm just going to clean that bottom out like so. Before you use the drill though, be sure to inspect your mortise and tenons to see if they might have a taper to them. And oddly the front leg is cut square and as you can see the back leg has the taper. In this case I would sand inside by hand. Using the drill may make an oversized hole. And now after our sanding and prep, you can see that our mortise and tenon is loose. So we're going to have to do something to compensate. Since the front leg is cut square, I'm going to use the wedge and the slot method here. And then we'll use that pantyhose hack on the back taper joint. So now let's take our side rail and we're going to cut a slot in the tenon end, the tenon that goes in the front leg, of course. And we want to center this slot. Also, I like to cut across the grain. If you cut with the grain and you put your wedge in it, it might accidentally split the tenon. Now make sure you don't cut past the finish line because you don't want the slot to be visible after you assemble it. Now I like to come off this line about an eighth of an inch just to prevent that. Now if you have a rail like this and you no longer have a finish line, you can insert it into the mortise and mark it like so. And finally, if you have dark wood and you can't see the mark, then go ahead and measure the depth of the mortise. Mark that and then cover your tenon in with blue tape and then transfer the mark. Now we're going to wedge the tenon and I cut several pieces of leftover cherry at a five degree taper. Hardwood works best but it doesn't really have to be cherry. Now we're going to insert it into the saw curve and the first attempt uh, didn't spread the tenon end at all so I trimmed some more off and I tried again and again <laughs> until I got that tenon to spread. Then I marked the wedge as shown and then I cut off the end of it uh, down about an eighth of an inch or so from the end of the tenon. Now I'm going to try it for fit in the mortise itself. It was still slightly loose so I just tapped in that protruding one eighth of an inch into the tenon and then it fit fine. So how do you know when you got it right? The tenon should fit snugly in the mortise but not real tight where it takes a lot of effort to remove it by hand. I'm going to glue up the chair with the broken leg first and we'll start with the dowel pins. I'm going to use yellow glue here, but if you have really old antique chairs, you probably should use hide glue to preserve their value. That would have been the glue they would have had back in the day. This product has about a 20 minute open time, so we can't dilly dally around here. So now we can assemble the joint and then we can clamp the bottom together. Now while the chair is still in clamps, we're going to go ahead and install our side rail. At the start of that process, I'm going to go ahead and coat both mortises with my brush with glue. Now remember, we've already installed the wedge in the tenon and fitted that. So let's concentrate on the other joint. And this is going to be the pantyhose joint. So first put a liberal coat of glue on the tenon end. Now I have already cut a patch out of my pantyhose, or not my pantyhose, my wife's pantyhose. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna stretch that over the tenon. Now I'll put a liberal coat of glue on the pantyhose. Enough so that the pantyhose will be saturated. And now we'll coat the wedged end of the tenon. 
Now we can go ahead and install the rail and the mortises. And uh, we want to clamp it in place and then clean up the excess glue. Now we'll take a sharp Stanley knife or the equivalent and we're going to cut away the exposed pantyhose flush with the joint. Be careful here not to scratch the wood but we want to make sure that we don't have any pantyhose showing in the joint after we're done. And after you cut away the pantyhose you're still going to have some residual glue that will need to be cleaned off the joint. And now we're done and we have a nice clean joint. Now we need to reinstall the corner block. Before we put it on though, we want to make sure to put a little glue on the exposed finger joint. So now we can slip it over the bolt and then fit it into place. Good and snug. And now we can reinstall all the hardware. Two hours has gone by, so now it's time to remove the clamps. So do the pantyhose work? Well look, I can't get it to come apart. I would have to use a spreader clamp to separate this joint. Now the second chair has the same set of problems that the first chair has, except that one advantage it has is it does have four legs. Now I followed the same procedure for disassembly, cleanup and prep, and the final glue up. The difference is that I did use pantyhose this time on both ends of the tenon for both joints. And now the front joint, unfortunately, is really loose and sloppy. So the question is, will this pantyhose actually hold? Well, we'll see. Before I walk off and leave this, I'm going to stand it upright on my table and make sure all four legs actually sit on the tabletop. It's important to do this during your 20 minute open time for your glue. It'll be much more difficult to adjust after your glue dries. So now, it's time to take it out of clamps and we'll see if that sloppy joint actually held. Oops! <laughs> well, I guess there's your answer. So I hope you can see that. As you can see, it's completely loose. And you can still see the pantyhose here on the end of the tenon. So what I'm going to do, we'll see if this will work. We'll try another application on top of this one. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit with my knife. There's, there's a glue ridge here in front that I'm going to cut that off. But we're going to leave the pantyhose intact. And using the same procedure as before, I'm going to go ahead and put another layer of pantyhose on top of this one. And hopefully that'll be enough to fill that sloppy gap. And if this doesn't work this time, well, I know a couple of other old-timer remedies we can try. So now we can let it sit a while. So now we'll see what two layers of pantyhose can do. So I'm going to take the clamps off. And I've let this sit overnight this time and cure. Here we go. Moment of truth again. Oh, yeah. It will not budge. So... I think that answers that question. <laughs> now you may ask, how long will one of these pantyhose repairs last? Well, done properly, they'll last for years and years. Now we've repaired all the joints on the chair. Now you'll notice this chair needs major refinishing. So that's my next job, but that's another video. So folks, I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Be sure to send me your comments and your questions, and I will get back to you. I love answering those. So until next time, Thanks for watching.